Hi folks, this is Steve from Open Flight Solutions, and right now I'm going to show you a little bit about using AHARS with the uh, version 2 beta firmware. So things that have changed with uh, the version 2 is that we now offer the ability to display attitude when the system is sitting still. Before, with the first version of the beta, you actually had to have the aircraft moving before you'd be able to see uh, any attitude indication. And while that's really the only way that it's useful, it is a little bit difficult to tell whether you have something working or not. So we've uh, updated it so that it displays what we call static attitude. Um, we've also changed the refresh rate on it so that it now uh, refreshes at 10 hertz rather than 5 hertz. So you actually get a bit smoother display on your attitude. Uh, and we've made a number of other uh, improvements, and there are more on the way. Uh, this is not the last release. Um, we'll probably have the final release out sometime in March, um, maybe April, depending. But, uh, but things are coming along nicely. Uh, what we have now works quite well. So um, here is a flight box that has been updated with the, uh, the Attitude equipment, all the AHARS sensors. It's, you can tell because it's got this uh, extra top. Um, this is a pretty standard unit. Just kind of. And normally, with the first version of the, uh, the firmware, you had to configure it so that the box was set like this, with that towards that printer out you, there you see, being the front of the aircraft, and with the antennas facing towards the back. Um, that's a pretty standard orientation. Most people who set the system on the glare shield and use it set it up this way because otherwise the antennas are like crunching into the glare or into the windshield. But there are people who blind mount these boxes and want to be able to put it at another angle. For example, they want to be able to mount it like that, or like that. My hand out of the way, or like that, or like that, or that or really almost any other configuration you might want to, uh, to do. So to do that, uh, we've actually added the ability to calibrate it and to orient it at whatever uh, orientation you prefer. You can even have oddball angles like this if it made some sense in your airplane. Now the trick is that to do this, we need to be able to first figure out what direction is the forward direction, which direction is the direction of flight for your airplane, uh, usually the best way to do this is to take a piece of tape, stick it on there, and draw an arrow showing which way is forward. Because in order to calibrate it, we're going to need to take the forward direction and point it up. For this example, we're going to imagine that the aircraft is going to have the flight box mounted so that that is the forward direction. You've got cables coming out the side and going to the front or something like that. So. Just to keep everything straight, I'm going to put a piece of tape across here. And I'm going to mark the direction that is forward with a little arrow. So now you see that. So the next step that we're going to need to do is go into the configuration. All right, here we are at the status screen on a system that's been updated with the latest update, version 02 of the AHARS firmware. Um, you can tell, of course, because it still says AHARS beta up here, and in the version it says AHARS version 2.0. So, uh, status screen is more or less the same. Um, you've got the same information about UAT and 1090ES reception, so that shows how many messages it's received on both of those uh, frequencies in the last minute uh, in the sliders and then the peak that it's received over here on the, uh, the right side. We have the number of UAT towers, and since we're on the ground, that's going to be zero. Uh, that would climb up once you get to altitude and you actually start receiving data from UAT towers. Uh, GPS solution, again, we're in the office, so it's only got a 3D lock at the moment, uh, with nine sats in solution, and it's uh, scene 11, and it's um, Almanac uh, on board has about 20 that it's tracking. Below, we've actually got some new stuff. This is the uh, UAT statistics page. And of course, since we're not actually connected up to um, a UAT tower at the moment, we're not going to have any. But it'll show you the number of METARs, SIGMETs, TAFs, etc. that it's received. So you can actually keep track of how much data you're getting from the ground towers. Um, uptime, the system's been up for about four minutes. It's running at about 124 degrees. And the CPU load is new. Uh, that bounces around between, oh, usually one and a half to two and a quarter or something like that. Uh, so 1.25 to 2.25 or somewhere in there. Um, 
if it goes much above 2.5, uh, probably need to restart or something. And again, this is a beta, so that could happen. So there's the, uh, the status screen. Now what we need to do today is go down to the settings screen. So we'll click on that. Um, and you'll see I've already got it turned on in this one, but there's a sensors switch. You'll need to turn the sensor switch on in order for the sensors to work now. That's part of the beta. Um, and you'll also need to calibrate your system. And this is what you use to set the orientation. So the arrow that we drew, we're going to actually make use of that now. So click on this, and it'll say to, uh, to set the system up, you're going to want to point the forward direction vertical, straight up and down, so that you know, we can measure gravity and we can use that to figure out what up and down are so that we can do it. So take your system and turn it so that the, uh, the arrow that you drew on that piece of tape is pointing straight up and then hit set forward direction. Then lay it back down and set it so that it's going that in the, uh, the, the orientation it will be when it's actually bolted to your airplane and hit the set up direction. At this point the sensors are calibrated and you can click OK. Now it will actually take about a minute to go through a, uh, a quick calibration routine now that it knows what the orientation is uh, and it will do that at the beginning of every flight so you're going to want to fire the thing up and hold the airplane still for about a minute to make sure that it's got a solid orientation. Uh, at that point it'll be ready to go. So I'm going to show you the other new thing. Um, after you've let the thing uh, calibrate for a minute uh, we're going to go into the GPS AHARS screen. Okay, here is the GPS AHARS screen, and you can see that it's a little bit different. GPS information is more or less the same as you're used to seeing, uh, but you'll see that the AHARS display is no longer the little paper airplane. Uh, it is now an actual attitude indicator. And this is uh, basically, I mean, I, I wouldn't use this for your primary flight instrumentation at all. It's not designed for that, but as a backup, it's available. Um, and you should see it showing your orientation. And if you uh, move the uh, the box up in the orientation that you uh, selected, you'll see it increasing in pitch if you move it down. And of course, if you change the roll attitude along that same orientation, you'll see that alter as well. So this is the new static um, uh, AHARS that we've got set up so that you can actually see it when it's not in motion. When it's in motion, of course, it will do the same thing, but only when you actually move the airplane. So. Uh, there is a button down here. If it's slightly out of alignment, you can hit Cage, and it will lock it back down. Uh, now, down here along the bottom, you'll see that there's actually a, uh, a heading indication. That uses the GPS ground track, so while we're sitting still, it may bounce around. As you can see, the, uh, the GPS information moves a bit, even when it's static. Uh, it's fairly normal. Once you're actually up in the air, especially once you've got a WAS lock, uh, it will be much more accurate. But what it's showing there is your GPS track, not a magnetic heading. So that is the, uh, the process of orienting it. Um, if you have questions, please uh, post a message on the forums or drop us an email, uh, info at, or pardon me, support at openflightsolutions.com. Thanks.